Welcome to St. Lena Catholic Church for the celebration of the 13th Sunday in Ordinary Time. It is a joy to worship with you today in order to preserve the sacredness of this Eucharistic celebration. We ask that all phones be silenced and out of reverence, please refrain from chewing gum and texting during mass. As Catholics, we fully participate in the celebration of the Eucharist when we receive Holy Communion. We are encouraged to receive communion devoutly and frequently. In order to be properly prepared to receive communion, Catholic participants should not be conscious of grave sin and should have fasted for one hour. A person who is conscious of grave sin is not to receive the body and blood of the Lord without prior sacramental confession. If you're not of our faith or outside of the church, please come forward to receive a blessing. The readings for today are found in the Journey Songbooks eight, uh, 964A. Please stand and join in singing our gathering hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My brothers and sisters, I welcome all of you to St. Helena Church today. And as we prepare for our Fourth of July holiday, in a very special way at Mass today, we ask the Lord to bless our nation and to give us the grace of conversion, that our people may return to the Lord. And so as we come before Almighty God, let us prepare by calling to mind our sin and humbly asking the Lord's forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are the Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, out of love for us, you gave your life on the altar of the cross. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. We have children's church today, and so if we have any children here, I invite you to come forward. Lord Jesus Christ, you said, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for these precious children whom you have entrusted to their parents to lead and guide them in all things and especially on the path to heaven. And we ask you, Spirit of God, to open their minds and hearts to the understanding of God's holy word. And may Almighty God bless you as you go forth, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. One day Elisha came to Shunem, where there was a woman of influence who urged him to dine with her. Afterward, whenever he passed by, he used to stop there to dine. So she said to her husband, I know that Elisha is a holy man of God. Since he visits us often, Let us arrange a little room on the roof and furnish it for him with a bed, table, chair, and lamp, so that when he comes to us, he can stay there. Sometime later, Elisha arrived and stayed in the room overnight. Later, Elisha asked, Can something be done for her? His servant, Gehazi, answered, Yes, she has no son and her husband is getting along in years. Elisha said, call her. When the woman had been called and stood at the door, Elisha promised, this time next year, you will be fondling a baby son. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. If, then, we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Please stand. Lord be with you. With your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his apostles, Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. Whoever receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever receives a righteous man because he is a righteous man will receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives only a cup of cold water to one of these little ones to drink, because the little one is a disciple, amen, I say to you, he will surely not lose his reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Twenty-six years ago, back in 1997, a 62-year-old man named Anthony Fuina, an Italian-American Catholic from Long Island in New York, was having a very bad day. He was anxious, worried, and upset. You see, a tumor had been found in his colon, and his doctor told him it didn't look good. A biopsy had already been done, and now Anthony was at home nervously awaiting the doctor's call to give him the results of that test. Soon enough, the phone rang, but it wasn't the call that Anthony was waiting for. It was his real estate agent. 
who needed the keys to a house that Anthony wanted to sell and wanted to show it to a prospective buyer. Anthony didn't really want to leave home that day because it was raining and because he was nervous, but he had no choice. When he got in his car, he resolved to make the trip as quickly as possible. But as he drove through the streets of his town, something unusual caught his eye. You see, standing on a nearby street corner in the, ra in the rain was an elderly man with a gray and white beard. And the man was waving to him to stop. At the light, Anthony stopped his car for a moment. He lowered the window, and the poor man explained that he needed to get to a certain address in the next township. But no one would give him a ride. Normally, Anthony did not pick up strangers or hitchhikers, but something about that man compelled him to say yes. And so the older man settled in the passenger seat of the car. He thanked Anthony for his kindness, and off they went. They chatted for a few minutes, but then the stranger said to Anthony, something is wrong. I can tell something's bothering you. Anthony explained that he was worried that he had cancer, cancer of the colon. And immediately the man asked him if he could pray over him. He placed his hand on Anthony's abdomen, and right away Anthony felt an intense heat going through his body and an overwhelming sense of well-being and peace. The man's hand emitted what seemed to be an electrical current. And Anthony, suddenly free of all worry and anxiety, simply listened as the man began to pray in another tongue. When the prayer ended, he told Anthony that all was well now. He was healed. God had healed him. The Holy Spirit had come upon him. They talked a bit more, but soon enough they arrived at the man's destination, and he said that he had to go. On the corner of that intersection, there was a church, the Church of Maria Regina, Mary the Queen. The man got out of the car and quickly disappeared, but not before he told Anthony to trust in God to keep on praying, but not to worry. When Anthony got back home, he was euphoric. He told his wife about the man, and then the phone rang with more good news. The doctor called to say that the tumor was benign, but that surgery would still be needed to remove it. That night, Anthony went to bed a very happy man, but all during the night, he felt a pulling sensation on his abdomen, as though the tumor was being removed. Some weeks later, at the day of the apparent surgery, the surgeon opened him up, but there was no tumor to be found. Anthony knew that he had received a miracle from God. And in the weeks and months after the surgery, he immersed himself in prayer, and he even joined a prayer group. And he began to pray over people who were ill. Now, fast forward three years to the year 2000. Anthony's daughter was preparing to be married in just a few weeks. And in the midst of all the wedding preparations, Anthony received some bad news. The tumor had returned, and this time, Cancer was confirmed. In fact, his doctor told him it was stage four. His doctors also said that before surgery could be done, he would have to undergo chemo and radiation. Anthony couldn't believe it. Very bad news. Right before the wedding. One night before the wedding, his daughter came home with a prayer card that her friends had given her her worried father. And on the front of that card, there was an image of an elderly Italian friar, a monk. As soon as Anthony looked at the card, he cried out, that's the man who healed me three years ago. That's the man I picked up in the rain. 
Now his daughter didn't know anything about the man whose image appeared on the card, so she called the friends who had given it to her, and they told her that the monk was a man named Padre Pio, who was being considered for sainthood, but that Padre Pio had died 32 years ago in 1968. Anthony went through his chemo and radiation, but in his heart, he knew that he would be healed. He began to read a great deal about this man, Padre Pio, and he prayed for his powerful intercession, a man who had died 32 years earlier, but who had hitched a ride with him just three years before. Sure enough, after undergoing an endoscopic procedure, Anthony woke up to find the surgeon standing over him. And he told him that while he couldn't explain it, there was no sign of a tumor nor of cancer. He said, Anthony, you are a very blessed man. Anthony Fiona lived 15 more years before he died of cancer six years ago in 2017. He was 82. And during those years, Anthony became very well known as a special friend of Padre Pio. And in 2002, he and his wife were invited to go to Padre Pio's canonization in Rome. Anthony also founded the Padre Pio Miracle Foundation for Children with Cancer. And he personally ministered during those years to hundreds of people who came to him seeking counsel, encouragement, and prayer. And from this, we learn that while death is inevitable, damnation is not. Heaven awaits us if we but love and serve the Lord. If I could add a personal note here, a few years ago when I was pastor at Sacred Heart of Jesus Church in Baton Rouge, we were privileged to host the relics of Padre Pio for one day on display. For the final 50 years of his life, Padre Pio bore the five wounds of Jesus in his hands, his feet, and his side. And every day he bled profusely. Two of the relics in our church had the dried blood of Padre Pio on them. One was a glove that he wore to hide his wound. The other was a white linen cloth that had been used as a bandage to soak up the blood. And of all the relics that we had, including his monk's habit and his cape, his rosary, the two relics that everyone wanted to touch were those which had his blood. People came with their rosaries and scapulars and prayer cards and strips of cloth just to touch them. And they waited in long lines to do that, to touch the dried blood of a man who had died 50 years before. More than 3,000 people crowded into our church in that single day. Now, I tell you all of this by way of introduction to the message that I would like to leave with you today. The month of June just passed was not Pride Month for us as Catholics. In fact, it was the month of humility because the entire month of June in our Catholic tradition is consecrated to the sacred heart of Jesus. Jesus who is meek and humble of heart. On the cross, the heart of Jesus was opened by a soldier's lance and ever since that moment, a never-ending fountain of cleansing water and saving blood has never ceased to flow upon us sinners. And now that we've entered the month of July, you should know that the entire month of July in our tradition is consecrated to our Lord's precious blood. First comes the heart and then the blood. If the blood of a priest who died in 1968 is still a powerful vessel 
of God's presence and his healing power. Think of what the life-giving blood of our Savior poured out in this Eucharist can do. My friends, in the gospel today, our Lord calls him to himself, and he tells us that he wants us to make him number one in our lives, more beloved even than the members of our family. He tells us to serve him with all our hearts, body and soul, mind and strength. When blessed Pope Pius IX instituted the feast of our Lord's precious blood in the year 1849, it was yesterday, by the way, the first day of July, this is what he wrote. Think carefully of what he says, and I will leave you with these words. The precious blood we worship is the blood the Savior shed for us on Calvary, the blood that he assumed at his glorious resurrection. It is the blood that courses through the veins of our Lord's risen body even now, now that he is seated at the right hand of God the Father and reigns with him in heaven. It is the blood made present upon our altars by the words of consecration spoken by the priest. It's the blood that has merited sanctifying grace for us. And through his precious blood, Jesus washes and sanctifies our souls. And he inaugurates the beginning of eternal life in us. I conclude today with the prayer that was given by Jesus to St. Faustina when he gave her the chaplet of divine mercy, which we chanted right before this Mass. O blood and water which gush forth from the heart of Jesus as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. O blood and water which gush forth from the heart of Jesus as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. O blood and water which gush forth from the heart of Jesus as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. I invite you to stand now, and together let us make our profession of faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, he rose from the dead on the third day, ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from whence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. With confidence and trust in our Father's love, let us offer our needs to him in prayer. For the intentions of our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Bishop Michael, all our clergy and religious, and for the intentions of all of us present today, we pray to the Lord. Lord for all the holy souls in purgatory, heaven's hospital, we pray to the Lord. For an end to abortion and all sins against the dignity of human life, we pray to the Lord. Lord that God will strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of the church, we pray to the Lord. Lord that many young people will respond to Christ's call to follow him in the consecrated life and in the priesthood, we pray to the Lord. For the grace this week to take up our crosses, whatever they may be, trusting that Christ will safeguard us for eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Lord for those for whom this Mass is being offered, for the sick and for those who have died, especially Mrs. Sarah and La Barbara, we pray to the Lord.
Lord God, Heavenly Father, as we come before you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who shed his blood that we might be saved, we give you thanks and praise in a very special way today as we anticipate the day of our national independence. We ask for a spirit of conversion to come upon the people of our land, that we might repent of our sins, and especially the sins against the sanctity of life. We thank you, Jesus, for the gift of our faith, and we ask you, Spirit of God, to cleanse us of sin and make us holy in your sight. Do we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received 
the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O oh God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty. Since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks. As an exaltation, we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, By the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you've summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At our Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity we may, we may be a fruit that lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and that of his Holy Mother, I demand and command that any evil spirits, hexes, vexes, triggers, trances, vows, or demonic blessings among those who have gathered, their loved ones and their possessions, through the authority of Holy Mother Church and the body, blood, soul and divinity of our Savior, Jesus Christ. I bind them separately and individually and break all seals. They're bound and the seals are broken. They're done so in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we offer our totus tuus prayer to Our Lady, let's especially ask her intercession under her title, The Immaculate Conception, uh, she who is the patroness of our nation. Totally yours, Immaculate Conception. Mary, my mother, live in me, act in me, speak in me and through me. Think your thoughts in my mind, love through my heart. Give me your dispositions and feelings. Teach me, lead me, and guide me to Jesus. Correct, enlighten, and expand my thoughts and behavior. Possess my soul. Take over my entire personality and life. Replace it with yourself. Incline me to constant adoration. Pray in me and through me. Let me live in you and keep me in this union always. Amen. Thank you for coming to Mass. I hope you have a beautiful Fourth of July. And uh, just a word more about Padre Pio. We have a beautiful image of Padre Pio uh, in the rear of the church. And I hope that he is a friend of yours and that you are a friend of his. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace.